So today I'm going to show you how to balance wheels on a car using weights with the very cheap bubble balancer. You can get these from Harbour Freight. I got mine off eBay for around $50. So a lot of people have had bad things to say about these. A lot of it is really reading the instructions and setting it up correctly and sort of understanding what it does. So tip number one, tighten these bolts as much as you can. If this stick ever so slightly shakes it will just throw a few readings so that's number one secondly this pin right here put some grease on it so it has some nice lube so when it meets the contact sort of hole inside here it's not getting stuck or anything like that it's free to move around so that's tip two tip three when you're putting it on make sure it's actually seated on the pin you can look up underneath and double check this the first thing to note now it is sort of recommended to use it on flat ground, like that there, but this is my driveway, it's really slanted. You can see, despite being on a slanted ground, the top still sits straight. It's, it's really simple physics. So you don't need a flat ground. I would choose one anyway. And when it's all set up here, make sure the bubble is in the middle of the circle. If the bubble is not in the middle of the circle, you can take your Phillips screwdriver and adjust these screws. By turning these, it moves the bubble around. This is just a little simple panel that pushes down, and that's all the screws do. It just helps you calibrate it so it's centered before you even start trying to balance the tire. You can see it's slightly over here, so we're just going to turn this screw and make it central. Now once the bubble is right in the middle there, move it around. Turn it, move it up and down, and make sure that bubble goes back to center. Now, once we've done all these steps, I can say for sure that this is calibrated enough to try and balance a wheel. Now, when balancing a wheel, especially a used one, uh, clean off as much as you can. Don't go absolutely crazy, but clean off the dirt, get the stones out the tread here, because this will affect the balance, it's added weight. And again, when attaching weights to this, uh, we need to clean the surface with isopropyl alcohol. So make sure the whole inner edge is clear, uh, clean just as much as this one. So just make sure it's clean of debris, and then we'll start balancing. So now all the stones are out, it's somewhat it's as clean as it's going to get. Uh, a lot of people remove all the weights on the wheel. Well, yes, you're going to do that, uh, maybe, but if it balances right right now, why would you take all the weights off? It's just wasted effort. So now it's clean, we're just going to throw it on the balancer and see where we're at. So when balancing a heavy wheel, you don't really have this problem, but with a light wheel, sometimes it doesn't push all the way down, so just push the wheel down and make sure it's fully on the balancer. Once you've done this, kind of rotate it and just bob it up and down and wait for it to come to a complete stop. Once it's stopped, naturally, we're going to find out where the bubble is on the actual uh, wheel itself. You can see it's slightly off from the center towards here, which is, say, the V in advantage right here. Now we know that's sort of where we need to apply some weight. We're going to, again, rotate it, bob it up and down, see where it comes to a stop. Now the V for advantage was over here before, it's come to a stop here, the V is over here. We need to confirm that the bubble is still pointing towards the V. So if we zoom in on the bubble, you can see the bubble is still pointing towards the V. So it's a good indication that this is where weight needs to be applied. Again, try it over here and over here just to make sure. So you can see here, again, the V is over this here this time and the bubble is still pointing towards the V. If people say this doesn't work, then how does it, you know, confirm this four times? It is pretty obvious. So as long as, it, again, it's greased up, it's free to move, you can rotate it, confirm, triple, confirm where the weight needs to be applied. You know, the system works pretty well. It's just setting it up and getting used to this and understanding this. So really now I've sort of explained how that works. Um, again, when I say leave the weights on, I mean if it's absolutely fine, then we don't need to remove any weights or do anything. We've confirmed the bubble is not in the center, so now we're actually going to take all the weights off the wheel and go again. So there's two types of weights. There'll be these kind of clip-on weights, and then there'll be tape-on weights as well. The tape-on weights look like these and they're taped onto the inside of the rim, usually for aesthetic purposes, but also you can kind of have a balance on the edge and 
uh, a balance in the middle and these are the uh, tape on weights here usually come in quarter ounce you can get half ounce ones as well so to take these off if you don't have like a special tool just insert a flat head underneath it probably helps if you take it off the balancer and just pry it off flip the wheel over and check for weights around the edge on the other side too for the tape on weights they're usually taped on this portion of the wheel here anyway around there so now all the weights are off, we're just going to use the same technique I talked about before. The bubble's pointing over here. We're going to rotate a few times and just confirm that this is where the weights need to be applied. So we've pretty much confirmed where we need to start adding weights, which is over here towards this TA right here. Now what we're going to do is slowly drop on weights until the bubble is in the middle. You can just stack them around here like so. Once the bubble's perfectly in the middle, we know exactly how many weights to tape on. It does actually look like a lot, but each of these is only a quarter of an ounce. This is one whole ounce, so you can see the difference there. Now, one thing I want to talk about really quickly. Uh, it looks like I need two ounces of weight here to balance this wheel correctly. If the balance is showing you need 5 ounces or more on one side, it means you have the heavy part of the rim next to the heavy part of the tire. In that case, what you should do is deflate the tire, rotate the tire 180 degrees so the heavy part of the tire is here, the heavy part of the rim is here, and then rebalance it. it it's just a statistical unfortunate event where you had both heavy parts on the same side. So that's all that means. So now I know where the weight needs to be applied, right here. I'm just going to draw down here and make sort of like a nice line so I can reference this when I flip the tire over. Right, I flip the wheel over. I've drawn my line where the weights need to be applied. I'm going to stick these on. This line represents the center of where the weights are. So the weights will come out here and also out here. We're going to put them directly in the middle of the rim. Well, the middle of the wheel, so we need to measure from the ground here to the very top here and put them in the dead center. So for that, we just use a tape measure here, record the top, divide it by two, and draw a line across. So you can see the center of the rim here looks quite deceptively low, but this is indeed the center of the wheel measuring from the floor there, and the wheel's resting on the floor. So this is the center, and this is where the center of all our weights is going to be. So the last thing I'm going to mention is static versus dynamic balancing. Now, dynamic balancing you should always do, really, and you can use those machines that cost a few thousand to do that or take it into a balancing center. Uh, the wider the wheel, uh, the more important dynamic balancing is. So if you can have skinny uh, car wheels, you might be okay with this, like a static balance. So if you have a rumble on the freeway at 60 miles an hour, you do this procedure, it's gone, maybe it's okay for you. But I do recommend dynamic balancing. Obviously a really cheap bubble balance isn't going to do dynamic balancing. And dynamic balancing, you might have the wheel in terms of one plane balanced correctly, but you're talking about the edges of the wheel as well, so while it's balanced this way, you still have these kind of uh, things in motion as well, which need balancing. So this is a, what is called a static bubble balancer, it's for static balancing. We're not dynamic balancing, I recommend doing dynamic balancing, but if your rumble goes away doing static balancing, then you know it's okay for you. So now we're going to put our weights on the inside of the wheel here. So what I did here, I just got some acetone and gave it a really good clean, just where we're going to put the weights themselves. I already gave the whole rim a good go with acetone, and you know that isn't just not shifting before I did this. But just this small area here, just that extra can of dirt where we're going to um, stick the weights on. But it's not really dirt that will throw the weight off at all, it's just the tiniest, you know, crumb. <laughs> So now the wheel weights are on, I've exaggerated the cross section here so you can see that the middle point is where those intersect and therefore this is perfectly center where the bubble indicated we needed balance. I've reused wheel weights here uh, from a, an old wheel I had before 
And again, that's perfectly fine if you have the right sort of adhesive strips for that. I wouldn't recommend anything that might fly off at high rotational speeds because you'll just throw your wheel out of alignment. And these might just fling off in maybe a critical uh, part on your car. You might get stuck in a brake caliper. So you don't, you don't really want that. Just make sure you have high quality adhesive when using, uh, reusing old wheel weights. And again, using the clip-on weights is perfectly fine when using a static balancer, as long as you spread the weight on each side. So if this is the location, uh, take half this weight, which is one ounce there, they're a quarter each, put one ounce here and one ounce on the other side, and therefore you're statically balanced well with those weights. So let's throw this back on the balancer. So now we'll put the weights on, we're back on the balancer, you just need to confirm using the same technique that the bubble is now in the middle by rotating it, moving it side to side, and make sure it rests center. So as you can see now, this is perfect. So there it is, as you can see, it's, it's just a bit of knowledge, a bit of education, and these bubble balances, static bubble balances, they work perfectly. So um, thanks for watching.